Hey bakers, John from Preppy Kitchen here. Today we're making this delicious shrimp salad. Perfectly seasoned shrimp, lots of creamy avocado, and the rest is just gonna blow your mind. Let's get started. First off, let's smash and mince some garlic. I'm using about five cloves. You can use more or less if you're a garlic fiend or squeamish with it. I like smashing the garlic because I'm a boy. <laughs> but mostly because uh, it helps release the oils in the garlic and it makes peeling them really easy. I've tried those hacks where you put them in a jar and shake really hard and it does not work. I don't know what to tell you. I talked about this on Instagram, at Preppy Kitchen, and I had a bunch of my followers tell me that American garlic doesn't peel very easily for some reason, but wherever they are, the hack works. So in the comments, you can let me know if that trick works for you or how you like to peel your garlic, I'm interested. All right, give it a nice mince. You don't have to go crazy. It could just be like a nice chop, not a bad chop. Okay, that's all chopped up. I'm gonna set this aside on my knife like a big kid. I have some easy peel shrimp here. It's a nice option at the market if they have it. Or you can get pre-peeled and deveined shrimp. It's totally up to you. I have a bounty. I'm only gonna make a half of this because it's just me eating the shrimp today, and I'm already pretty full. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, seven. I'll make eight. I can always make more room for shrimp. <laughs> oh, nice, they're already deveined. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> if they weren't deveined, all you have to do is make a shallow slit along the back and pull out the vein, which is really just like the shrimp's digestive tract. All right, so just, Peel, peel, peel. Right now, I'm just going to pat the shrimp down a bit. This will make sure it like cooks up nicely. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use a combination of olive oil and butter to cook the shrimp. I love the taste of olive oil and butter, so why not? Just melt it up. Now we can add in our garlic. Just cook it up, stir frequently. You don't wanna burn it. Okay, now I'm gonna add my shrimp in. A little salt and pepper. Flip them over once they look cooked. You can add a splash of white wine right at the very end if you want. That's done. For the dressing, I'm gonna be using almost a whole shallot. This is a huge shallot. I'm gonna use most of it. I love the flavor it gives. It adds a lot of just pop and it's not gonna be like eating an onion. A shallot is a gentler onion. It's like its best friend without the attitude. And when you add it into the vinegar, it'll give it like a quick pickle and totally take a lot of that harsh bite out. So don't be afraid. It's a really nice way to add a healthy crunch to a salad too. So I'm gonna leave this kind of more in big, in like slices. I think that'll look nice on the salad. Try not to cry, those sea turtles are gonna make it. Okay, let's add this in here. Really used that whole shallot, didn't I? <laughs> Let's reserve a quarter teaspoon for later. Whoa, my eyes. I'm gonna add in about half of a cup of a nice vinegar. I like to use a champagne or a white wine. This is a white wine vinegar because I can't find the champagne vinegar in the pantry. There we go. Mmm. Let that hang up for a minute. We're gonna use a little bit of fresh thyme in this recipe. I love Love, love, fresh thyme. I'm just covered in tears, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love fresh thyme in almost all of my salad dressings. It's like one of my things. The smell is just amazing. It's like opening the door into your little garden that you have, except you don't have a garden, do you? Yeah. A little bit of a chop and add that in there too. That'll infuse nicely. Okay, while that's happening, I can add my olive oil in now. Why not? I have one avocado here and I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's ripe and not brown inside. <gasps> what if it was brown? <laughs> Ready? <laughs> this makes me so happy. The only thing comparable to it is cutting a coconut open and it just becomes like two perfect halves. That gets me too. All right, let's peel the skin off gently so it's not marred. By the by, in the cover shot for this video, you're looking at beautiful, stunning, psychedelic candy beets. I'll put a title here for what they're actually called, it begins with the C, but they are like farmer's market delight. Didn't have time to go to the farmer's market today. So we're using regular beets, which taste just as delicious, 
they're just not psychedelic pink and white stripes. So if you know me in my videos, I'm all about the stripes and pink and white, I'm done. All right, we're gonna give this a thin slice. And the last thing to do before we assemble our salad is just make our little like tomato situation happen. These avocados are soft as butter. It's one of the nice things about living in California. You get really good avocados. All right, we're gonna set these aside and chop up some cherry tomatoes. The tomatoes with this dressing is beyond. I don't even, I'm like, I don't love tomatoes. I like them and I eat them, but they're not, you know, I'm not, I'm not that into you, especially if they're not cooked. Like cooked tomatoes, that's one thing. Raw tomatoes, they better be really, really good, like summertime fresh. But this dressing with the shallots and the tomatoes is kind of amazing. So even if you're not a super tomato fan, try it out. Let me know what you think. We're just cutting them in half so they're in manageable bits. Things are relaxing about cutting vegetables and not cutting yourself. Set that aside. And my last bit of prep is a blood orange. You can use any kind of orange you want. Blood oranges do have a beautiful dark color. Look at that. Uh, and they're not as acidic as a regular orange. So you get kind of a more delicate flavor, which I think helps in a salad because they don't overwhelm the rest of the ingredients. But if you can't come by them, any kind of orange will do. Look at this color. This is stunning. Every time, every time. <laughs> Some blood oranges are like basically regular oranges. Some of them are totally dark like this and I love it. Okay. I mean, that was not the best job peeling, but it'll work. I'm just gonna cut little slices out now. These will be arranged nicely and look pretty. We have everything sliced and prepped. The only thing we have to do is shake our mason jar with our top with the top. Everything's all prepped. Let's finish up that dressing. Let's add in like half a teaspoon of salt to start and we'll give it a taste. Never trust how much salt you're supposed to add into a recipe, no matter what you read, because even brands of salt are different. Like iodized salt is really salty and strong. Sea salt's a little bit mellower. And then depending on the grain size, you could be adding more or less. So just add salt to taste. Same goes for pepper too. It's also a personal taste thing. Some people love salt. Some people can't stand it. A friend of mine in college <laughs> loved salt and her boyfriend at the time gave her a salt lick for her birthday <laughs> as like a gag present, but she liked it. That looks emulsified. Love the colors. Oh my gosh. Let's plate it up and get this ready. I'm gonna take my tomatoes, just toss them in some of the dressing really quickly. And if you want, you can do this part ahead of time. So just let your tomatoes sit in that dressing. They'll absorb some of the delicious flavors and release some of their juices too. And it will be amazing. Let's arrange our plate. This is the exciting part for me. <laughs> so I have some beets here, regular old beets. I bought canned ones because canned ones are actually good. I don't know if some of you are like not into it, but the difference in fresh beets to canned beets isn't so extreme to justify the time for me. Scoop on some of this tomato situation here. Really pretty. And who could say no to a beautiful fan of avocado? Let's try and fan it out nicely so you get all that gradation of color. There we go. That looks nice. To that, we're gonna add some shrimp. You can arrange them however you'd like. I'm gonna try and make a little pattern with them. And I'm dredging them in some of the reserved butter and garlic before I place them too, because hello. I think that looks nice already. Which is a nice way of um, portioning things out for people. If you want, and you love that garlic too, you can spoon on some of that caramelized garlic all over the shrimp. And it is amazing, mixed with the butter and that wine. It's a little bit extra dressing to your dressing. I don't know how attractive it is, but it's so delicious. I love garlic. I forgot my own recipe, <laughs> food blogger, calls for some minced parsley. So just give it a quick, a quick cut. Now I'm gonna spoon on, oh my gosh, do you see these beautiful shallots here? <gasps> so full of like bite and zing. Add on some of that minced parsley over. Um, I almost forgot the blood oranges. What am I, what am I thinking? <laughs> okay, let's arrange some of those in there. You could have tossed these with the tomatoes as well, but we didn't do that. So they can just be interspersed around so people can get bites here and there. And 
Now we're done, okay. Hands off. That was a giant bite, but that was so delicious. The shrimp was perfectly seasoned, and I'm so glad I dredged it in that like butter garlic situation just before the end because that made a big difference. If you like this recipe, check out my creamy, dreamy, and very, very zingy lemon cake. It is so easy to make and you will uh, love it. And on the theme of like light and delicious things, how about a fresh strawberry margarita? So worth the extra couple steps to make this drink from scratch. You will be tanked. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe.